go ahead and turn on the recording so that we've got a record of it as well. All right, so topics, um, let's see. So we've got uh, community bonding uh, for the next, for about a month, right? Yes. And then project for, I believe it's 11 or 12 weeks for basically three months. Uh, and so I assume that the first question is, how do we achieve community bonding? How do we make sure that that's successful? And then go from there. Um, what other topics should we put on the list? Well, yeah, I can just put common topics we address um, in uh, Google um, Summer of Code. Uh, so first it's communication uh, channels. So it's uh, meetings, uh, mailing please, if needed, chats. Uh, then um, another important topic is actually stakeholders. Um, so getting as many uh, contributors uh, as possible. Uh, also, of course, knowledge transfers uh, when needed. Getting uh, permissions and the required infrastructure. Uh, planning of the project. Last but not least, actually uh, socializing the project. So yeah, these are main things uh, we are doing uh, um, during community bonding. Uh, I uh, might have missed something, but yeah, there is definitely a lot of work during community bonding. And this is actually brings up uh, to the first question I, I would like to discuss is about availability. So yeah, mm -hmm. Uh, during community bonding, everybody has uh, different uh, capacities. Some people have vacations. Of course, uh, in your case, uh, you also uh, just put an announcement about Google season of dogs. So, uh, of course, we need to adjust our plan. Um, uh, the main assumption in Google uh, Summer of Code and same for JSOC that uh, yeah, we are not available uh, full time or anywhere close uh, during the community bonding. At the same time, we want uh, it to happen smoothly. So it's important uh, to have um, uh, communications and to ensure that uh, we can uh, find uh, uh, proper uh, meetings and uh, meeting times so that we know about each other's availability. So, for example, I can go ahead, I can say that in the beginning of September, I disappeared for two weeks because I go on vacation. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's yeah, just two weeks. So it's just an example. And if somebody else has uh, such major commitments or major availability, unavailability plans, uh, you could share them. And I should just alert that I'm, I'm, Mark is primary Jenkins Infra, right? For the, for a while here, Infra support, therefore tends to be distracted by that. Uh, so I may not, particularly during community bonding, I may not be as responsive as I'd like to be. But I'm, I'm not on vacation, just at risk of heavy load. All right, so, and that is. Zinab, any, you said you were moving, that you're changing location, that probably will affect your availability. Are there other things where you'd like to note during the period up until September 13? Um, no, aside the fact that next week um, from Monday to Sunday, Though I'll be available, but not as much as I would like because I'm traveling around a bit. But if there is anything, I'll be available. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's 
and it is perfectly fine, particularly during community bonding, right? Oleg, can you help me be sure I understand? I think community bonding is intended, is it's okay that it's not the same level of time investment as during the project phase. During the project phase, it's relatively heavier than community bonding. Community bonding is yeah, the getting started right. phase. It's expected at the same time, yeah, uh, to have the project efficient, community bonding has to happen because yeah, I've been participating in GSOC for five years by now. And basically community bonding is uh, the phase when the majority of projects fail, even if the failure effectively happens later. Uh, so uh, we still need to organize it. At the same time, uh, many communications can actually happen asynchronously. Uh, so yeah, commonly our recommendation uh, for projects is to do as many discussions as possible in mailing lists, etc. Uh, historically, uh, still projects tend to use chats more. But for example, chats are also kind of asynchronous and you don't have to have a meeting to discuss everything. So it would be one of the ways to actually ensure that uh, we can uh, move forward. Mm, but yeah, as Mark said, uh, it's expected that we have less availability. Great, okay. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned communication channels. Uh, Zinab, is Gitter accessible to you? Is that a workable communication channel for you as a Gitter, Gitter for chat? Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm going to paste a, U, a, a URL to the uh, Gitter chat for the docs. I think that maybe it's a low enough, uh, low enough volume, a low enough traffic channel that I think we could reasonably use it. Oleg, do, has that has your experience hinted that that would work, or should we do a dedicated channel for um, for Google Season of Docs? It depends on how intensive it is. Uh, so again, uh, yeah, this is the first time we participate in uh, Google uh, uh, Season of Docs. Uh, but yeah, I would start from a single channel, at least for community bonding. And if we see that it doesn't work, uh, we can move out. In uh, JSOC, uh, the most of uh, projects actually have uh, separate channels. Mm. Uh, but yeah, again, yeah, uh, documentation, SIG channel, firstly, uh, it's quite active, but uh, at the same time, it's not something like you have them uh, 1,000 messages per day there. Right. So I think it could be sustainable. And for my link list, for sure, it's not to use uh, the docs one. I wouldn't mind either also having things in the Gitter chat because it would kind of pull in other people who might you know, be interested or have be able to review or have other comments. So just keeping it open for as many people who'd be interested. Awesome. Now, now, is there a is there a Gitter chat that's focused on Kubernetes, or is that a Slack channel? I mean, is we could consider doing the theming this instead around Kubernetes rather than around Docs in that sense? Okay, so one thing that uh, there is is dedicated channel for Jenkins in Kubernetes Slack. So this is one of the options we could consider. At the same time. Uh, uh, so Kubernetes lock isn't managed by Jenkins community, and it means mm. that if you need any changes and integrations, it might be difficult. Plus, uh, that channel is actually quite active. Ah, uh, okay. So we would be easily, we could more easily get lost in that channel, be overwhelmed by volume. Mm, yeah, but it's uh, something worth exploring. At least it's definitely a good place uh, to be for contributors. Okay. Because yeah, yeah, most likely this channel could be used to facilitate feedback. So for example, one of the things we could do during community bonding, uh, contacting stakeholders, etc., we could launch a kind of survey to see what actually users expect from the communication, uh, what are the key areas. And for such uh, options, uh, yeah, uh, using uh, existing community channels is a good thing to do. Ah, right. Okay, that's I like that. So survey the community, the Kubernetes Slack channel. Uh, we may not then use it for detailed communication with each other, but that's a great place to get 
Yeah. Excellent. Okay. It can be a great place, for example, for getting feedback or maybe asking some questions. Because yeah, there is a lot of Kubernetes experts there. So again, it's a, it's definitely a channel where we we should be. At the same time, whether it's a main channel, um, yeah, personally, uh, I wouldn't vote for that. Uh, but yeah, again, uh, during community bonding, we can uh, review options and uh, make an indicated choice. Because right now, we, we don't have enough data to see. Mm -hmm. Any now you had noted stakeholders. Any guidance there, Oleg, in terms of stakeholders and? Should we finish with communication channels first? Oh yes, yes, please go ahead. Because we haven't discussed meetings. Ah. So yeah, for meetings, how we usually approach in JSOC, we recommend the teams to have two meetings per week uh, during the coding implementation phase. And we recommend to start setting up these meetings during community bonding. Uh, for JSOC, I'm not sure what would be the cadence. I think that uh, it makes sense to just utilize existing uh, documentation SIG meetings where possible. For example, yeah, I'm not sure about uh, Mark's office hours. There are office hours at something like 10 p.m. UTC on Mondays, right? So yeah, obviously I cannot participate there. Uh, I'm not sure about here and there because we're in the similar time zone, but it's I rather depends on personal availability. Uh, but yeah, we can definitely find uh, slots, and my recommendation would be to target uh, weekly meetings. Uh, maybe not the next week uh, if you are moving, but a uh, week after it makes sense to start having meetings. <laughs> But I'm um, sorry, I just wanted to confirm on the meeting times. There's um, meetings that happen on Mondays. Um, that's um, very late. So I might not be, it might not be consistent for me because sometimes, yeah, I'm awake, but sometimes I'm already be at sleep because I think it's around like 12 a.m. They're yeah. about here. So uh, yes, it is. Oleg's, Oleg's suggestion was that we consider either a Thursday, Thursday midday your time, or a some other day. Or we could we can do absolutely that Monday session is not expected that you would attend because it is so late. It's that's very much a North America North and Americas centered thing, and it's after the working day in most of the Americas. So it's intentionally very, very late, and we know it's impossible for Europe and for Africa. Yeah. So, so absolutely, you're right. You are not expected to attend Monday. Yeah. Okay. So what we need to do is to actually uh, maybe create a doodle uh, for the weekly slot. Uh, I like that. Let me do that. Okay. And another important uh, meeting we need to discuss is uh, documentation seek meeting. So I guess the next meeting is uh, this Friday, right? Uh, do you plan to do it, Mark? I plan to cancel it for this week, or just to call it that we're our week our weekly office hours are sufficient. So, but we could hold it if it would help. Past attendance has been lighter than the office hours, and so I'm I'm more prone to cancel the that Friday morning one Friday a month, and continue the weekly office hours. Uh, Zinab, would you be available this Friday? Would that work for you? It would be Friday at let's see, you, is which which time zone are you in, Zinab? GMT plus one. GMT plus one. Okay, so same time zone as you are, Oleg, right? You're GMT plus one? Mm, yeah, plus two, I guess. Yeah, ah, plus oh, two. Okay, all right. So let me do a quick look at the calendar. I mm -hmm. think. So it was an on UTC, if I recall correctly. Yeah, so it is. it would start at this, at the same time as this meeting did today on Friday. 
Okay, that's that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so then, so then, and are you are you av you're available that at that time, Zinab? So we could just use that time as one of our meetings. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. So one thing about that is that uh, so if you do it this week. And uh, yeah, we can announce the project in the mailing list, etc. Invite people, but I'm not sure that uh, we will have a lot of contributors joining on such short notice. So okay. maybe maybe one of the options is not doing it tomorrow, but doing it next week. And and sorry, Oleg, I misspoke. It is actually scheduled for next week. All right. <laughs> so, so my my mistake. So Zinab, I assume it's okay. Are you available next Friday? At, at yes. this time? Yes, I will okay. be. Mm. Sorry about that, Oleg. It was next Friday at, so, so that's the scheduled time. It's on the 28th of August, 2020. Mm. Actually, it will be me who is unavailable because I have DevOps vault recording at this time. Ah, okay. No, uh, but yeah, if I finish early, I will join. Great. Mm -hmm. And Zinab, if you find that that time, well, we'll do the doodle poll to find a time, but that mm -hmm. Friday Friday time works great for me. And, and we'll, we'll do the poll to see if we can find a point where weekly meetings will work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So speaking of that, yeah, we really need to start the content stakeholders earlier. One of the ways is to actually announce the project. So I still have an open, open action I can announce it in Jenkins social media because, well, I was waiting for Google to fix uh, the JSON site. Uh, but yeah, more importantly, we should rather announce it in the Seek and in the Jenkins developer mailing list. And yeah, maybe in cloud native seek as well, because uh, it's highly likely that we will get uh, some contributors out of there. So, yeah, my question is who would have some benefit to do the announcements? I could do that. So uh, let, let me take the announcement piece, Oleg. Um, okay. I was, I was going to proffer one more, which I would love to have a blog post introducing um, herself and the project and would think that we would beg Zenob for that, but I can do the announcements. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, when we say Jenkins social media, that's really uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, should we do something on the Facebook account as well? I don't remember if we've got access. Yeah, I have access to there, but yeah, Facebook uh, is dormant right now. Okay. They did uh, basically. We can do it later. Great. But uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So the announcement is intent to facilitate contributions. Okay. So it's not to brag about the project, but actually to invite people to join. Right. And yeah, I guess blog post would be rather about the same. But yeah, blog post, uh, it's a bit flexible. You can uh, do multiple things. Well, and would it be acceptable if Zinab also used the blog post? Maybe it's a, maybe it will confuse things, but to introduce She Codes Africa? I think that's, that's such a, such a cool concept that, that hey, I'm Zinab and I'm, I'm here, but I'm also involved in other things and mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah. It was already covered to some extent in the CD Foundation blog post. Uh, but yeah, I believe that uh, the content could be duplicated. Uh, it, uh, has published a blog. Yeah, it wasn't too much about uh, Shukots Africa. But yeah, I agree that uh, it's perfectly fine to advertise other communities. Oh, good. 
Okay. Okay. And also, we need to announce it in the developer mailing list. Oh, right. Yep. Because yeah, developer mailing list is basically the main, the central uh, mailing list for Jenkins contributors. I would rather say that the name is a bit obsolete because yeah, the name with uh, yeah, basically we have developers. We use it for all kinds of governance matters, etc. So it's basically a Jenkins central. Um, but yeah, you haven't never renamed it. Yeah, it's anything anything that isn't specifically a user question tends to end up there, right? The, yeah, all no, all governance, all we talk about documentation there. Yeah, you're right. Mm. So it's basically a central contributor mailing list, and not mm. all contributors are developers. Okay, so uh, what else? Uh, we, so we, mm -hmm. there was was it Torsten Walter um, as a as a possible coach or or a, an orientation session? Is that in this section, or should we consider mm -hmm. that as part of knowledge transfer? Yeah, it's basically uh, contacting uh, maintainers and uh, key stakeholders. So, yeah, in the community, we have uh, a number of contributors uh, who are active uh, in uh, Kubernetes-related components. There are also external companies, for example, Helm Charts are currently external, and Torsten basically works on uh, Helm Charts. So, but, yeah, we could contact uh, these uh, uh, contributors directly and uh, to invite them to participate in particular areas, uh, etc. Okay, so we're actually going to be over time a bit. Uh, yeah, let's yeah, do I a have, check. Yeah, do you I have, have a hard, hard stop? I do, I have a hard stop at 9.30, so. <laughs> mm. so I have 30 really minutes more. Okay, and unfortunately, I have, no. Yeah, I have 30 minutes more. Zinab, are you available for additional time? Or should we schedule, do we need to schedule another time when we could meet? Mm -hmm. No, let's continue. I'm okay, good. great. Okay. So, All right. Kristen, thank well, you for thank, being here. Thank you. <laughs> we'll, we, the notes are available to you, and the recording will be posted a little later. All right, great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And welcome, Zinab. Thank <laughs> See you. All later. <laughs> See you all later. Bye. See you. Bye. <laughs> Okay, so what else about uh, stakeholders? Um, yeah, I think that it's, uh, yeah, we need to spend some time uh, to build a full list. Do you want to do it now? No, no, we, we can gather it later. Uh, okay. Mm. Yeah, that one I fear, Oleg, it may be better that you do it rather than me. I'm not sure. I, I am confident I do not know which are the key contributors in that area and your experience with Cloud Native SIG will help a bunch. Okay. Yeah, I will do that. But yeah, anyway, for us, it can be gradual. So it's not like we need everyone to be contacted next week because at least my vision for the project is that we would actually need to start from uh, setting up a skeleton uh, and the structure for the communication. Uh, and uh, we would proceed to specific topics after that. But again, it's my vision and it's subject for discussion. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure whether we want to discuss it today or next week. Uh, but yeah, I think that. Uh, mm, we don't have to contact uh, everyone overnight. Right. Anything else on stakeholders and onboarding contributors? I guess for now it should be okay. Uh, somewhat related, it would be great to have a project page uh, on, on the Jenkins side. So pretty much similarly to how we do for um, JSOC. And uh, yeah, as in JSOC, uh, um, uh, JSOC uh, has two pages. So one is final report, 
which is like a kind of a blog post. And another one is just project page, which could be a reference uh, to this page. And yeah, I believe that we could update uh, docs, seek documentation and uh, other locations to reference this project uh, because uh, yeah, firstly, it will make it more discoverable. So uh, separately, yeah, the project naturally maps to Jenkins roadmap. We have a Jenkins on Kubernetes item there. We have Jenkins on Kubernetes and documentation seek projects list. So maybe you can just uh, cross reference it. That seems, so is that one that feels like Xenob should handle the blog, it, that's a good place it may get her more familiar to work with the project, to try to create the project page, but then again, it may also be a, an uncomfortable or a, a daunting task. Do you have a sense? Is that something I should do or Xenob should do? Um, it shouldn't be a big deal to create it. I think I can, I think I can create the project page also. Yeah. Okay, great. I'll just ask for guidance if I need any. Yeah. Great. All right. Yeah, so we have a root page for JSOT, so you can just uh, create something uh, under this root. Okay. okay. And Zinab, you have already contributed to the Jenkins IO um, site yes. multiple times, so yes. that's great. Okay, so it's not that there's any any Oh, how do we, how do I operate with this? You're already comfortable with that. Great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on stakeholders and onboarding contributors? I think uh, that's fine for now. Um, yeah, we we'll likely need to talk about uh, it a bit more once we see how many actual stakeholders we have, because yeah, this project may go in different directions. So one way is basically doing all the documentation, compiling on uh, the documentation. Uh, separate uh, way is to actually uh, uh, facilitating the things and helping others. So for example, uh, just ensuring that there is documentation structure, uh, helping others to contribute particular bits of the materials. Uh, yeah, still writing a lot of documentation. But at the same time, uh, rather making it a group effort in the community. But yeah, we will be able to make this uh, decision on the approach once uh, we see how many contributors are actually interested. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, knowledge transfer then. So mm -hmm. I like the idea of a skeleton of the document socialized um, Zinab, have you had experience in the past with Kubernetes? Um, yes, yes. Right. Now, in terms of one of the things I was assuming was a session with Torsten and others would be a good knowledge transfer. Uh, yeah, it would be, though, again, I'm not sure whether it has to happen during community bonding because um, it's about Helm charts. So, yeah, there are two options, do it in, during community bonding uh, or do it uh, when we actually start working on this area. Right, a uh, good point. It's perfectly okay that during the project phase from September onward that Lots of work happens there. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, still, if you do it in uh, during community monitoring phase, um, plus one. So, then if you prefer this approach, we can actually do that, or we can uh, schedule it. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure where would it be according to the project plan, uh, but yeah, most likely it will be closer to the second part of the project. Mm -hmm. So, what would be your preference there? Hmm. I think 
I love to have the sessions, the sharing sessions. Mm -hmm. Um, um, sorry, do you ask question on the sessions? Yes, yeah, so when do you prefer to have them uh, during community bonding or wait yeah, during community bonding? Okay. So then we could uh, try it. Mm. Yeah, the, and the one challenge there is we're in August and many people are on vacation in August. So there's a risk it won't make it during community bonding, but knowing that it's preferred, we can try to try to get those scheduled and planned. Yeah, I can uh, discuss it with Thorsten, but yeah, I think that it would be rather a beginning of September and it means that somebody else would need to host it. Because it's not like I cannot uh, host it during the vacation. I actually would be happy to do so. Uh, but at the same time, I can commit on any internet quality. Well, and I, I like, I, that's when I would love the excuse personally to host it. Because then I could listen and learn while Torsten and Zinab are discussing. Okay. So, Okay. Mm, so I guess uh, I can take action item to actually uh, kick off the discussion. Uh, but yeah, then I can uh, transfer it to you so that uh, you can continue and uh, set the date. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I guess we need uh, similar on Kubernetes plugin. Uh, so. Zineb, in your plan, uh, you step, uh, start from Kubernetes plugin, right? Sorry, I didn't get that. So does your, does your plan <clears throat> start with or have a key component of using the Kubernetes plugin? And I assume it does. Yes, it does. Yeah, because the initial evolution is that we start from Kubernetes plugin. Then uh, yeah, deploying uh, Jenkins to Kubernetes. So for that, we had a knowledge transfer by Mark Jenkinson in May. Well, it was online meetup, but it's quite straightforward with foundation documentation. Uh, then yeah, you can press it to Helm charts. And for example, Jenkins Kubernetes operator. And yeah, also a lot of other plugins like Kubernetes CD plugin. So yeah, I'm just, uh, so basically it uh, boils down to two areas. Uh, one is, um, sorry? Uh, yeah, sorry. Should I repeat it? I think I think it was just background noise on oh. Zineb's microphone, okay. so I think you can go ahead or like. Yeah. So again, we still need to, to plan uh, how we approach to the documentation, how we structure that. But yeah, generally there are two main parts. One is uh, running Jenkins and Kubernetes, and another one is more user side is actually uh, running uh, payloads and Jenkins pipelines in Kubernetes or let's say deploying applications for Kubernetes. So there are basically two components of the documentation and we can uh, do knowledge transfer separately. We can put split it to phases. Great. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, for example, we could meet uh, next week and uh, spend time specifically on actually reviewing the plan because yes, an Apple already has a great plan uh, in the application. So we should use it as a base together. Uh, but yeah, we, again, we could discuss what would be the main deliverables, etc. 
because yeah, it would be important for community bonding. And yeah, it's important that when we start the implementation, we actually uh, have some vision of where we want to be. I, I like that. That would that would allow us to let, if that's okay, Zina, with you, the doc SIG meeting next week would be almost entirely focused on uh, discussing and reviewing, refining the plan that you've already assembled as part of the the application to Google Season of Docs. Would that be okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. so permissions and infra. Uh, Oleg, that was one that I was concerned about. Can you give some okay. insights or suggestions there? Okay. So for permissions, most likely we do not need special permissions right now because, yeah, there is Jenkins IO website. And unless we decide to create a mini site for Kubernetes documentation, so if we just target putting the documentation on Jenkins IO, uh, there is no need for special permissions. Uh, for infrastructure, is a, it's a bit more different because for infrastructure, yeah, one of the ways is to actually run everything in Minikube or on a similar service locally. But yeah, it's most likely that you will have to at least run some components uh, during your project. So that's why I wonder whether we should consider having access to a cluster or whether we find uh, these uh, deployments in Minikube. And I would assume that she'll need cluster access for just the nature of the the surprises that I expect to come or the things that are more complicated than will work with mm -hmm. just Minikube? Um, yeah. Well, for me, it's firstly a part of the plan. Because let's say we want to write a section about how to run uh, Jenkins in AKS. Mm. Okay, then you have we need to have an AKS account. Uh, but if you want to just proofread guidelines for Kubernetes plugin, most likely you can get away with Minikube. So that's why I'm not sure whether we have answer now. But uh, this is definitely a question you need to answer uh, during uh, the um, community bonding phase. Because if you want uh, to provision infrastructure somewhere for testing, and it implies some costs, and uh, it means that uh, you need to secure budgeting for that, etc. So uh, you have uh, budgets in the Jenkins project, uh, but it really depends on uh, what we need to deploy and how, whether we have other options. So yeah, that's why it's rather preferable to do it during community bonding because it may take a few weeks. If you do it uh, when we need it, uh, then um, yeah, there is a high risk of the project being delayed. Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Mm -hmm. Dinap, does that make sense to you? You're comfortable with that, that next Friday we'll, we'll, we would love to have a discussion and include that topic in the discussion? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So I guess we went uh, through key items and um, except socializing the project, but yeah, I believe that basically uh, country stakeholder outreach, which we discussed before is more or less covers it for now. Right. Um, so any other topics you see missing for the community bonding? None that I see. Zinab, any from you? Um, none from my end. None from my end. Great. Yeah, thank you. Super. Yeah. So, again, uh, if you see something, uh, let's just uh, let's discuss it synchronously. 
So again, uh, the main objective is to basically ensure that you have uh, everything you need uh, to start the project and that uh, we prepare the environment, uh, that we uh, are comfortable with what we are doing and uh, we are empowered to do what we need. So um, yeah, again, uh, if you see anything, just bring it up. No need uh, to wait until the next meeting. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to resolve many things asynchronously. Great, excellent. That covers all the topics that, that I had hoped and far beyond. Well done, thank you. Zenob, any other topics you'd like to add before we close, before we conclude? No, I think I'm good. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Then I will I will go ahead. Let's we'll end the meeting and I'll upload the recording uh, and the notes. You should have a link to them. If you do not, I will certainly post a link to these notes um, in the uh, in the chat. Yeah. So the government recording um, actually there are two options. Firstly, we upload it and make it public like we do by default for project meetings, or we can uh, actually just uh, keep it unlisted. Mm. So well, basically both ways uh, work and yeah. for me, whatever works, uh, any preferences? I've, I've liked public, but I'm okay with unlisted. Unlisted will still allow Xenob to review at any time and anyone who has the link to review it. So. Yeah, either is great. Either is great for me to public on this stage. Both are comfortable with me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if 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 you're not if you're not uncomfortable with public, I pr I'm biased towards public myself, so I I would tend to upload it public. So let's just assume I'll go ahead public. Okay. Okay, that's fine. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. And we will meet next Friday at this same time, so eight days from now, and discuss further. And we'll have interactive chats and conversations either in chat or the mailing list between now and then. Thanks, Zenab. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. So, Thanks, Oleg. Looking forward to work with you in the next several months. <laughs> same here. All right. Bye.